Hey kids, welcome to Unit 2, Lesson 7, Accessor Methods, Exercise Number 7. A couple of lessons ago, we decided to do the Up High class, so we're going to continue with that. Let's go ahead and jump in and see what we need to do. We're going to import our Pi class from our backpack. Hopefully, you remember to commit it last lesson. Let's go ahead and import our Pi class. You can see it's extending dessert, one instance variable diameter. We have one default constructor. It is a pi with a diameter of 12 inches. Then we have a three parameter constructor. We're getting two of those parameters from our dessert class. We're adding diameter from this one. How do we do that? We're using the super keyword to get the flavor price constructor from the dessert class. We don't have much else in our code. In dessert, we have our two private instance variables, flavor and price one no argument constructor and a two argument constructor nothing else we're going to write accessor methods for the instance variables in the pi class and we're probably going to have to write the accessor methods for our dessert class then in the food truck runner we're going to initiate a pi object and then we're going to call the accessor methods for each instance variable and then print the results and we get some helpful hints down there in case we don't know Let's head back to our pi class and we are going to write an accessor method for our instance variable. And what does an accessor method do? We've talked about this in a couple of our videos. These are commonly called get methods. And this is a public method that can be accessed outside the class so we can see the value of the instance variables. What's the anatomy look like? Our accessor method is public because we want access outside of the class. We put our data type, whatever it is, followed by the name. And I call these get methods because typically we put the get name in front of the instance variable we want to get, hence the getter method. In previous lessons, whenever we wrote a method, we used void, which meant just go ahead and accomplish the task. Now we want to provide a value. And to do that, we're going to use the keyword return. Return exits the method and provides the value what is called. We then have to specify the instance variable we want to return. That means whatever our instance variable is, it's going to get that instance variable value and then return that value to us. And since it's a public method, we can access it outside the class without changing the actual instance variable within it. Again, keeping with our principles of encapsulation, everything within the class. Well, that doesn't sound too hard. Let's go ahead and write one. This is going to be our accessor method for diameter. And remember, we want it to be public access. So we're gonna put it public. The data type we wanna return, diameter is an int. We want to get the diameter. So we're going to use get before our instance variable named diameter. Two little parentheses and some curly cues. Since this is an avoid, we want to return something. We want to get a value. We're going to use the keyword return and then the instance variable that we want to get. Well, that's it. This now gives us access to our instance variable outside of our class, and that could be very helpful. We still have to do it for our dessert class. Let's go down here, give ourselves a little space. Let's do get method for flavor. Public access, flavor is a string. We're gonna get flavor, some parentheses, and our curly cues. We want to get a value, so we want to return. What's our instance variable called again? Flavor. Well, that's one. Let's get the second one done. So get method for price. Public access. Price is a double. We're going to get price. Some parentheses and some curly cues. We want to return a value. 
the value on your return is price from above. Now we can call these methods from our main or food truck rudder method. Let's go ahead and print those values. In level six, we are supposed to instantiate a Zerd object and call it successor method. Since we just wrote it, let's go ahead and make sure we didn't write it wrong. We're gonna do a dessert object. We'll call it a delicious pastry. It is a new dessert object. Our flavor, we'll make it vanilla. And our price, we're gonna make it $9.99. Let's remember to comment this out. This creates our object. Let's print the flavor. We're going to do a print statement system.out.println. We're going to do some quotes for a string literal flavor. We're going to concatenate. And now we're going to call from our pastry object. We are going to call our get flavor method we just created. Before we get too crazy, let's go ahead and run and see if we have any spelling errors. We got vanilla to print off. Let's do that for our price system.out.println. Do our quotes, price, do plus. We're calling from our pastry object. We're getting the price method we just wrote. Let's go ahead and hit run. Got our price to print off. Let's go ahead and take care of our pie class. We need to create a pie object. It's going to be pie. We're going to call this pie key lime. It is a new pie. And we have to give it a couple parameters. This one has three. Key lime is going to be a lime pie. It is going to cost $29.99 because the limes are expensive, but it's going to be tiny at six inches. Now we need to do some print statements. We're going to do system.out.println. What do we want to print out? A pie of flavor. We have to concatenate from our key lime object. We're going to call our get flavor method. Because we inherited our methods from the dessert class, we should be able to print out the flavor still. Let's go ahead and hit run and see if that works. And it does. Need a little spacing here. And we should put something to distinguish between the two. So we will put our dash lines so we can tell between the two. Well, that's one, two more to do. This is going to be a pie price. Don't forget to highlight. If you forget to do this, remember you can highlight the whole object, shift quotes, and it'll do it for you. Concatenate, key lime, get price. Last one, this is the one we wrote in our pie class, print LN. Quotes, pi diameter is, we're going to concatenate, key lime, get diameter. And when we hit run, I should get all three of those to print off. Let's clear our console and see if we're right. There you go. We got all of our objects to print off. Pretty neat, kids. The key takeaways from this lesson is understanding why we need an accessor method. We use accessor methods to get the private instance variable values outside of the class. Remember encapsulation, one of the principles of Java, says that we should keep all access within a class to that class. To give access to this information outside the method, we use get methods or accessor methods.
how do we write them? First, we need the accessor method public to be accessed outside of the class. Next, instead of a return type void, we're going to use the data type of the instance variable. Then the naming convention says that we should use the word git in front of the instance variable we want to get. If we're trying to call the instance variable x, we would use git x. If we want to call flavor, git flavor. We put some parentheses and some curly cues. This time we're going to use the keyword return to exit the method and provide the value that we're calling. How do we know it value? We specify it. In our get methods, that would be to return the instance variable. And by using these accessor or get methods, we can get values outside of the class without affecting the class or the blueprint that we wrote. Get methods are really a core concept within Java. It's definitely something you're going to see on the FRQs on the AP CSA exam. Hopefully this video helped you understand accessor methods a little better. As always, kids, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye. Bye.